Hey everyone, Anthony 4B4 Diesel. This is the uh, last of the best 150 Prado 1KD that we're doing the injectors on at nearly 270k. BFE job, injectors and turbo, just a lot of prevention work. It's about to start traveling around Australia even more than before. Solid for at least a couple of years, maybe forever. Um, so if we're doing all that work while it's up on the hoist, I'm going to go over it and give it a bit of an inspection. So 270K, it's got a lot of gear on it. All the aftermarket accessories, all the things you've got to watch out for. Don't worry about this wetness and coolant. That's just us with our BFE job that isn't sort of completed yet. Still working on the car. It's got the K on recovery points. If you're going to have some aftermarket recovery points, um, they're certainly the ones to have. I mean, look how well they mold and shape into that original chassis point there so it's using that which is welded 360 degrees at both ends that side the other side so that's really good and you've got the piece that extends up to the uh, other part of the chassis as well so first bolt here look you know that's not really changing much but once you get a piece going up there i suppose it does give it a bit of strength but so does things like the bash plates <laughs> underneath here so you really got to think what you're doing with recovery it's not a recovery video there was it <coughs> excuse me um we'll just have a quick look around see if there's anything really obvious i mean it's got bilstein so you know what do i say there good luck what's going on with these rotors they look a bit I'm trying to work out what's going on there fiddle with the light on see that it look weird doesn't it what's going on there so it's all black and weird that's bizarre. I can't even tell what I'm looking at. Okay. Right. So they're slotted. They're slotted. And what's going on around this side? Because that just looks so different. I'm going to spin it around to this side to see if I'm looking at the same thing. It's just the surface of the rotor. Oh, they've been machined. And when you machine them, that's the problem with slotted people. So that's why you watch the videos, because it's not a video about that. But see how the slots have pushed through onto this side. So when they've machined them, yeah, anyway, long story short, look, you don't need slotted, and it's a waste of money. Bit of a wetness on the rack, but so what? Um, control arm bushes are looking bloody fantastic. Nothing wrong with that. So they've either been done or they're, someone's got lucky, because they are, they are damn well. They're like new, mate. They're really good. So lower bushes might have been done. I don't know. I didn't ask. Front ones look great as well. Yep, beautiful. Maybe the bills, these bills and stuff's really good. It's got all the underbody protection, all the K-on gear to pr protect, you know, the transfer case, the actuator guard off the back there, the fuel tank. Mate, this thing is ready for serious bash and crash. And that transfer case looks new as well. So something has happened with that transfer case. I'm going to put my money on. 100% that has been replaced and I can't remember the story, what went wrong there, what the story was, but I'll ask when he gets back. But that is what a brand new transfer case looks like. Um, as you can see, it's all shiny and beautiful. Um, fuel filter's been done at some stage. Looks like a genuine one, so it might even be getting done at the deal or he's using genuine fuel filter. Do it himself, because guess what? Careful who you let work on your vehicle. Rear pads, I'll say about 50% without looking in there too hard. Rear fuel tank protection, or it's got the aftermarket upgrade. So it's got 250 litres, I think, from memory. So, you know, whoever makes these things has got to have a name on it somewhere, doesn't it? Okay, there's your answer to that question. So, yeah, it's got the bit, the rear tank that's... So I think it's, from memory, the total's 250 litres, so massive. So there's plenty of weight going on. It's got the big, chunky Cooper tyres, which at least they give you the full tread depth still, unlike some other manufacturers. I believe I'm not measuring, I'm just looking at them going... They look nice and deep. Um, not, I mean, a lot of people use these tyres, but not that many percentage-wise. We don't see that many. But out of all the Coopers, a lot of them do get punches when the odd one is on a trip. Or we see. But this is one of the tyres that seems to go really well. So if you're going to get Coopers, this is the one, if I remember. ST, there you go. ST Max. I'm not saying to go buy Coopers, but if you're going to get one, these are the ones that a few people I know, they absolutely love them. They've had no trouble, and that's cool, no dramas. These are the ones that I don't think I've seen a puncher on as well. So there's obviously different Coopers for different purposes. I think it might be the AT3s they're copping the punches on, whatever, something like that, because they're really popular, really good for on the road. Yeah, you can see a nice new turbo up there. Look, look at that, isn't that beautiful? It needs a good clean-up, obviously. Still working on it, just thought I'd go over it. Bit of a free inspection front brakes have got heaps of meat they're almost like new um 
Yeah, nothing to see here. No oil on that turbo. Um, overall, pretty good. So let's just think about engine, injectors, BFE, transmission flush, as long as that's up to date, you know, because um, that's expensive. It's got a new transfer case, we think, by the looks of it. You know, you can see the different co colour at the join there. You can see the tools have been on the bolt, so that's all good. Don't know what happened, um, but that's cool. And... Exhaust is good, brakes are good, disc good, everything's good. Uh, rear axle bearings are something to think about. Telltale sign might be starting to see a little bit of oily grease stuff coming out past the O-ring at the end of the axles there, but I can't say 100% yet. Usually it's about 350K plus where we start having issues with the rear Prado bearings. They are an absolute pain to change. So you get the parts, you book it in somewhere, you gotta have special tools and all sort of thing. It's a pain in the butt, right? Uh, even our diff guy, when he does the rear Prado ones, he goes, ah, buddy, brown. And Hilux ones are easier, apparently, is what he says. So, anyway, um, nothing to see here. What a boring inspection. I've done my hardest to try and find some entertainment for you, but nothing here. There's a bit extra wire down here. What's going on there? What is that? Have a look at that in a minute, try and work out what's going on, because you can see it's cable tied there. I'd say that... That looks non-standard to me. It's not a normal thing that's down there, so I'm not too sure what's going on there. I haven't noticed that before, you know, looking under these cars a bit. Everything else looks sweet. It's boring. What a boring inspection. I get another boring one at only 270,000 Ks on a Toyota Land Cruiser Prada LC150. Okay, catch us in the next video. See ya.